All right, guys, welcome back to another fantastic episode at Three Pound Fishing. Glad you're here. Glad you're watching. Um, we are enjoying a beautiful summer so far, and these fish sometimes during those summer months get a little finicky. So we're going to kind of go through some things that we do to kind of help that bite. And we got one coming out of here right now. Let's see if we can get this guy. Oh, baby. And that's, that right there is exactly what happens, right? You've got a fish following you, and then all of a sudden it just turns around. What are we doing to try to help that bite, uh, you know, actually come to fruition, actually occur? What are we doing? So that's what we're gonna talk about today, guys. What are the different things that can help you get more fish in the boat? Stay with us. We're gonna be putting big fish in the boat. I guarantee you. Oh, baby. Good fish. All right, guys, what you didn't see is it took probably about four or five casts to get just a good eater right there. Let's talk about it. All right, so one of the things that is very important when you got a finicky bite is, and this is gonna sound elementary, but first and foremost, we need piles that have a lot of fish on it, the most fish you can find. And the reason why is because only a certain amount of those fish are actually gonna be active fish, they're gonna be super active. And it's those first couple casts that you have at that pile that are so critical that they're perfect, you know exactly what you're doing um, to take advantage of those first bites. So even on a, so on a finicky, finicky bite, I am without a doubt looking for piles that have a ton of opportunity, I know that the first three casts are gonna be the most aggressive fish that are gonna come off that pile, and then you're gonna to have to work for the others. Um, I do leave piles 100% of the time with a ton of fish left on them. I don't waste my time too much with the fish that are finicky that are going to take a lot of time to get them to actually move. Now, there are other things you can do. You can certainly use products like Bait Pop, which I absolutely love, and you can kind of chum the water. In other words, put it on your bait, make sure that, that that scent is you know moving through the pile and actually chumming up the water and those fish will start looking for what's creating that scent in my opinion um, but the other thing is you have to play these fish and very important that you're using what we call the stair step approach which is you're always going up in other words they're feeding up and they want to chase it uh, but you, and you're never dropping so we call stair step it's little thrusts it's little thrusts that are occurring while that fish is coming out at you so definitely some good tactics for a finicky fish. Now I've got some things I'm gonna also share with you here after we catch another one that I think are also equally as important when you have this type of fish bite in the summer. Good fish. Right out of the middle of the pile. Yeah, solid fish. Big fish. All right. <laughs> All right, guys, stud of a fish right there. That's a that's a fantastic fish on my home lake. It's a great fish, probably around a 13 incher, um, 13 and a half anyway. The uh, here's another thing you guys can look at. The size of bait is extremely important. Okay, um, I shorten up my plastics to, to make sure that the profile is small. I definitely try smaller baits. Now this is the Let's Go Fishing Pack. It's the hair jigs, guys. Uh, it's a great deal, but they're small, the 132nd. And I like the idea that you can, you know, sometimes these fish aren't looking for a big steak. You know, they're looking for something a little bit smaller and it's ideal uh, to definitely change up your profiles and then also change up the action of your baits. Um, I've noticed lately that the plastics, the paddle tails have been working fantastic, but it still doesn't change me from going to a 132nd ounce hair jig to really see if these fish are gonna change their actions because of that. So definitely, definitely check that out. First cast, so very critical that I act appropriately on these fish, right? So this is gonna be some of your more aggressive fish. I expect them to be firing on it, at least a couple of them. And, um, and we're giving that bait most opportunity it can to get their attention. So here we got one that's finally interested in coming out and he stops immediately. Mm, baby. 
Great fish. Now the other thing I did guys right there on that particular fish is I never felt that fish's bite. Not once, I completely 100% played my, my screen there. And you're gonna get that a lot. So you have to learn um, that you're not always gonna feel that tick or that thump. And that when I see a fish actually close in on the bait and close over it, I'm pulling. A lot of times these fish will just literally put it in their mouth and you'll never feel it. Especially if you're playing with a, a number seven split shot on top like I do, um, I'm still feeling the weight. I do not feel a bite whatsoever, but they will just just very quickly place it in their mouth and you're gonna try to perfectly time that. Sounds uh, difficult, but it's not. If you keep watching live scope, your time on the water will be critical to that. Uh... Gotta love a little mushroom top like that. Those are all crappie. And again, it's always those first and second and third casts that are so critical in the success you're gonna have on a finicky bite. So that was the first cast on this pile and I'm trying to maximize my bait time when it's down there at the pile. I'm not rushing it away. I'm looking for movement. I'm absolutely looking for somebody that's interested in it so I can start playing them. Um, but typically on those first couple casts, you definitely have them shooting off there um, right away. This one in particular is not really doing it, but again, we're maximizing our time. So here he comes again right here. So I'm really and he got very uninterested very quickly. So that's just a super finicky fish right there. All right guys, well that's gonna end it. Um, I don't know. Quite a bit of tips, but I'll tell you another thing I wanted to share with you at the very end. Uh, the rods that you use do matter. This isn't a sales pitch, this is the absolute truth. You want a rod that has complete backbone. I love the Hammer 10. I think a 10 footer gives you the leverage to get these fish and the, the flick of a wrist can put that fish in the boat opposed to having to do a full body to set a hook with a smaller rod. When it's an extremely finicky bite. The other thing is braid. I talk about it all the time. Uh, no stretch means you're setting the hook even faster. So when these fish just barely touch the bait, if you don't have the, in my opinion, the combination of a 10 footer with extreme backbone and braid, again, I use sniping braid, is critical in making sure that you can set the hook immediate. Um, has to be quick. So the other thing, you know, I'm a big hair jig fan. Um, I think you're more efficient having to worry about plastic sliding on and off. Um, you gotta you gotta use whatever is working obviously, but hair jigs to me are the most efficient way of putting fish in a boat. And on a finicky bite, I think it even holds even more more true. So I appreciate you guys. Um, it's a great summer. Uh, the content we're you know we're trying to put out probably one video a week through the summer months because we are all fishing, we're all doing things with our family. Um, but come the fall, we'll start doing two videos again a week, and we're looking forward to a full lineup of shows. Uh, this fall and certainly this winter. So if you're going to the Collinsville, the Grizzly Jig, uh, the East Tennessee, the Alabama, we're going to be at all those for sure and there's actually a lineup of more than that. So we're going to try to fill up a lot of these weekends with shows so we can share the technology that we're using out here on the water. Appreciate you guys. Take it easy.